Hello everyone and welcome to the Maryville University Hockey Center here in Chesterfield, Missouri. I'm Todd Panula and I'm here to bring you all of this evening's exciting ACHA action as it's the Iowa Hawkeyes against your Maryville Saints. It's been a tale of two games and they couldn't have been much more different than each other so far for the Maryville Saints as they come in with a record of one and one. They defeated SIUE, the Cougars, back on Thursday in a walloping offensive effort in which they scored seven goals with seven different goal scorers en route to a seven to one victory. It looked like they were gonna cruise pretty easily after a pretty good first period against Iowa last night, but it was not to be, despite the fact that the Saints scored the first goal of the game just about midway through the first period. It was the Hawkeyes who were dominant on the offensive end, out shooting their opponents by nearly a two to one margin up until about halfway through the third period. It would be in that second period where the Hawkeyes would tie things up and then they would score the go-ahead goal somewhat early in the third period. And that seemed to be kind of the knockout blow. Maryville would have a few opportunities here and there throughout the third period, but they really kind of seemed to be knocked onto their heels for some reason. And due to that, Coach Hogan was not necessarily happy if you watch the uh, post-game show on our Facebook Live. He wasn't necessarily pleased with the effort that he saw in the second and third periods, so it looked to see a little bit more jump out of his team tonight. As you can see, the team taking the ice. Maryville's going to be wearing their blackout jerseys. Mostly those will be used on the road, a smattering here and there at home. But right now, it's just kind of a special little treat as it's blackout night here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. The fans in attendance have been given black t-shirts. Not all of them have put them on, but they've been given out. So it should be a good contest here for the rest of this one. It's gonna be a tight one. We saw that last night, Iowa with the victory, only a two to one score. In the end, there was a couple of fortunate goals that nothing really Romerill could do about that. Aaron Romerill, the starting goaltender yesterday, we expect to see him in between the pipes again here this evening. But if not for Romerill, the game really could have been somewhat out of hand going into the second and third periods because he made a couple fantastic diving stops on the doorstep, putting the paddle down on the ice and keeping his team in that one. But speaking of big saves, none much bigger than Yasianizio. I'll try to get that right here in a minute. But he came up with a gigantic glove save in the third period when it looked like things were going to be tied up. We'll pause for your national anthem, and when we come back, we'll have the puck drop here between Maryville and Iowa.
Just about set to drop the puck here on this second game of a two game split. The Maryville Saints starting goaltender. It's going to be a battle of the number ones again here this evening. Aaron Romero going to be between the pipes for the Maryville Saints, countered by number one Ryan Yasciancio for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Kevin, Be Kevin Brooks' team comes in at 1-0 as last night was their first official game of this season, and they picked up a big victory over a Division I opponent. Maryville, meanwhile, comes in at 1-1, one one, having defeated SIUE back on Thursday and falling in a heartbreaker last night. So you see the black jerseys there on the ice. I apologize in advance because it's gonna be difficult for me to see the red and black doesn't necessarily pop the way you might think it would. So the Maryville Saints open up with possession of the puck. It's traded back and forth in the neutral zone. In behind the Iowa net, trickles over here towards the near side. Turner able to pinch in and cut it off. Prexler has it in behind the net. Springberg roughs him up. In behind the goal goes Gogan. Gagan, excuse me, it's gonna be that kind of night apparently. Gagan tied up in the corner. Stavro brings it out towards the circle, tries to serve one towards net. Turner keeps it alive as that one goes all the way over into the far side corner. Little tricky pass off the dashers as Springberg gets it out. Turner looking to put it right back in. Iowa with it at center ice, and then they just dump it in as they'll roll the line change. Just about a minute played here in the first period of a scoreless game. Turner backhands one towards the far hand side as the Saints build up through the neutral zone. Lifted high and into the near side corner. Giving chase was Alvagran. All the way back now to the Maryville blue line. Up through center. The stretch pass finds nobody, but they're going to wave off icing. Hawkeyes get it up the far side wall through neutral ice. Skating in now is Vanetti. He brings it in, trying to connect into front to Kund, but that one was knocked away, and now we will get an icing call as uh, Maryville trying to get their legs underneath them. We saw a couple good offensive flurries out of the Saints in the first 90 seconds, but no shots on goal. Carlson wins the faceoff for the Hawkeyes, but the Saints able to pick up the loose puck and get it out. High shot, gloved down by Romero. He leaves it on the far side of the net. This one goes up into the protective netting, but off an Iowa stick, so the faceoff will be in the neutral zone. Once again, Carlson in the faceoff dot against Juliuson. Hawkeyes come up with the puck off the draw. Again, another tough puck to handle for Romero. Bit of a bouncer on the high hoister. In behind the net, Dylan Thompson gets his first touch of the year on the puck. A late scratch was Jim Hunter. Thompson taking his place. Juliuson leaves it in the corner for Vigors. He overskates. Boudreaux gave chase but the Hawkeyes find space here on the near wing. Another high hoisted pass into the zone. Tied up was Lepore, but he still had enough speed built up to gain control. Now on it is Dudzik as he carries far wing. Lost it on the half wall. Juliuson bangs it off the dashers and it's in behind the net. Boudreaux's return pass intended for Simpson didn't quite connect. Hot pass out towards the blue line. Circle now out in front, jabbed away from Carlson. Good defensive stick by the Saints. Lifted puck, another icing call perhaps, and it will be. Spencer Turner was trying to sneak out on the ice, but the officials caught him, so Thompson will have to remain out there. Good start for both teams, although the offensive chances have been a little lax. Only one shot on goal, it belongs to the Hawkeyes, and I think that might actually have been that little bouncer in on goal. Another hoisted puck back out towards the goal. 
Yes, Siancio got it all the way up towards the blue line. Picked up instead by Jones. He's hammered into the wall. Saints get it up the zone, not out. Shot in from the point was easily caught by the defender. Into the far side corner as the Saints get on the attack. Tim Rye gives chase. He's rust up right around the end wall. Couldn't be grabbed by Blessing. Neither team generating much offensive flow. It's been a lot of back and forth here and not connecting on too many of the early passes. Hawkeyes get it out. It's pretty much been zone to zone so far. And once they get towards that attacking end, it's kind of fallen apart for both teams. Delayed offside allows Maryville to go back and pick it up behind their own cage. 15-50 left to go here in the first period. Saints slowing things up a little bit. Barking out orders from behind the net. Jones will try his luck up the left-hand side. Lifts this one down the ice. And it's going to be an icing call. A little bit of early frustration right now with the Maryville fans. And I think that's uh, echoed by Coach Hogan over on the far side. He doesn't necessarily look overly pleased with what he's seen so far but now the Saints break out two on two backhanded into the zone and now they'll try to get a line change Gagan on the four check but Iowa gets around it skate interception made by Prexler as it was coming through the neutral zone but as he dumped it in he couldn't chase it as it was delayed offside Boudreaux sends it back in and another delayed offside does not allow Maryville to get in on the attack very disjointed between these two teams right now. Not too much in the way of pressure either way. That one worked around Brzezuski. Back into the corner though it goes as Kuhn spins around his man. Bonnet looking for some open space. Brings it up through the middle, crosses the defensive blue line. Passes into the zone for Prexler, but the near side linesman says he was in too soon. Faceoff going to come back out to center ice. Hawkeyes win the draw. Get possession at their own blue line. Backhanded in from the red line. Romero slows it up behind the cage. Far side under the skates of Vigors. And he sends it out. Puck tied up in the faceoff circle, eventually coming loose, and now the Saints break out, coming up through neutral ice, lifted in by Juliuson. And now we get another stoppage. This is a very strange start. And now we're gonna get an interference call. So the Saints will go to the power play. Ethan Darby going into the sin bin. So perhaps the Saints can get something rolling on the offensive end here with a man advantage. Stavro on the face off, but the Hawkeyes come up with it. Bouncing puck still finds its way out of the zone. Jones back to get it all the way in his own end. Going to have to go 200 feet to get back into the offensive end. Rink wide, Prexler brings it up and then lifts it in. Vigors gives chase and tracks it down along the end wall. Sweeps it far side, Stavrow muscled off but regains. Loses control along the circle. Jones straightaway point, near side Prexler, top of the circle, peels off. Straightaway point, Jones, far circle, Stavrow wanted the shot, takes it second time, and that one's deflected out of play.
Good cycle work there by the Saints. Still a minute 20 left to go on their man advantage. But again, that high pressure that Iowa likes to implore, or employ, I should say, is uh, something that's difficult to practice against. Juliuson here on the near half wall, pinches in, gives it into the corner instead, takes the return pass. Straight away, MacArthur with a shot, looking for a deflection in front. Unfortunately for him, it hit a defender. Jeffers bangs it up. MacArthur held the blue line, but the puck just kind of popped over his stick and still went out. Just about seven minutes played here, under a minute to go in the power play. Coming up the middle, streaking through is Harrison, picking up speed, right circle, wanted to take the shot, but a defensive stick. That was Knudsen leaning in and poking that away. Almost a short-handed opportunity there. The stretch pass was just about two or three inches away from Kevin Horan's stick. Half a minute to go in the Saints power play. Ten seconds left, Harrison had it poked away, lackadaisical there on the zone exit. Dumped right back in by Decker and around the goal it goes. So Saints gonna go 0 for 1 with the power play attack. High off the dashers but gloved down by Kuhnd. Lifted into the zone by Dunville. Harrison at the blue line, had it knocked away. Kuhn once again getting in front. Harrison taken to the wall hard as Decker threw his weight into him. Dunville wise not to take the return hit because that was about to be a knee on knee. 11.30 left to go here in the period. This one again lifted down the ice and far enough. With the length of the ice, they call off icing at the last moment. I think the official said that uh, the Iowa player didn't give enough effort trying to track that puck down. Now we get to do another stoppage. It's going to be an offsides against Iowa. Just kind of an odd day so far here this evening. Your broadcaster for the evening can't seem to. Uh, get the words out cleanly so far and the play on the ice has been just as disjointed a lot of whistles a lot of stoppages one power play Saints had it got a couple shots on goal but we're still scoreless not quite halfway through the period here bouncing puck taken down by Wilson difficult to handle for Dudzik on the zone exit but Iowa still has it rink wide pass intercepted and back the other way we go blessing brings it in from the circle, can't get the puck to settle down. It was trickling and rolling along. A defensive stick jabbed in there as well. And Maryville's attack dries up like water in the sun. Pushed around blessing as the Hawkeyes got it through the neutral zone, but not under possession. Saints will bring it here on the near side. Cross ice pass, dangerous, almost intercepted by Carlson. Wilson lost an edge. Hawkeyes have it at their own line. Retreat a few steps into the zone. Wilson backhands it up through the middle. Deflected into the zone by Brzezinski, but the Saints go back the other way. Turner backhands it in, and they'll change their lines. Wilson in behind his own goal. Bumped off the puck, but got the pass off still. Up the wall, intercepted by Boudreaux. Renzuski chases it down for the Hawkeyes. Wilson fans on it initially. Second chance gets it here into the near corner. Pushed into the wall. Boudreaux got it back. Hawkeyes return the favor and slam Boudreaux to the wall. Puck loose along the near circle. Couldn't be held in by Bonnet as it was just a little too high. Back up the wall. Tapped in by Stavro. No icing. Wilson checks it down. Boudreaux had that one knocked around him. Wilson here on the near side. He can't hang on to it. High shot, blocker save, off the glass. Backhanded up by Darby. 
Good job defensively to slow up Vanetti. And uh, it looks like Liam Kuhn is shaken up a little bit as he heads off to the bench. Now a break for Stavro, but too many yellow jerseys in front. And now a silly penalty picked up by Stavro. I believe they're going to call it as a trip. It is indeed. So first power play of the game for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes, despite the fact that they won last night, were over on the power play. And they had quite a few of them. As there was a, a lot of calls last night. Back to the near side point. Knudsen sends it into the corner for Springberg. He sends it back out. Knudsen wanting to take the shot. Blocked in front. Gagan sweeps it up the ice. Harrison with the speed. And then he goes to the ice looking towards the official. And he says no sir on a potential answering tripping call. Springberg into the zone on the attack. Knudsen guarding the blue line. Saints trying to pick it off the wall and send it out. Knudsen keeps it alive. Pops into the high slot. And then Gagan blasts it down the ice. Knudsen gloves that down after it was played high up in the air by Yasiancio. Springberg into the zone, held in at the blue line by Carlson. Far side, trying to get it back to Springberg. Nothing doing there as they tried to go slot to circle. Wilson had abdicated the left point, and that's where the pass went. Puck leaves. Saints. Trying to chop it back out, unsuccessful in doing so. Turner bangs it out this time. Still 48 seconds to go on the Hawkeye power play. Somebody left the uh, emergency exit door over there on the far side open. Not sure the building operators would like that since letting some of the cold air out. Puck in behind the net. Lepore puts it out in front, bouncing puck, Romerel smothers. So the game starting to pick up a little bit for both sides. Two power plays will do that. One for each team. Saints trying to make sure that Iowa Goes over on their first chance, just the way that they did. Point to point pass as Decker found his man. Jabbed over towards the far wing. Norby couldn't quite hold it in. And now it's in behind the Iowa Hawkeyes net. Iowa trying to go coast to coast with it. Bringing it up with speed is Decker. Shot save. Decker back out in front. That one never got through. Off the post on a shot from the near circle. Some steam behind the shot from Jake Carlson. But he finds the bar. Up through the neutral zone. Saucered in by Dunville, but not very far. Again, rink wide pass. Both teams trying these long stretch passes and so far their opponents have been set up pretty well defensively. We've seen a lot of this as well. But, uh, Maryville just kind of forced to dump it out. Another icing call. Hawkeyes out shooting the Saints six to four. Another puck down the ice. This time they wave off icing. I want to send a special hello to all the family members and friends. Uh, had a chance to talk to the uh, Coffee family over the weekend. Made the trip all the way down from Alaska. They had some friends and family watch it up there, and we appreciate that. Safe travels to them. 
And obviously uh, some Australian fans as well watching, if not tonight, then the last couple nights. Hawkeyes get it dangerously out in front. Darby sends one towards net. Romer able to find that one, and now he's uh, a little bit miffed at the amount of contact that's been going on in the top of his crease. The way he came out of his net quickly, I thought that was going to boil down into something nasty fairly quickly, but in the end, he allowed cooler heads to prevail. Talked about some of our Australian fans. Uh, Tommy Steven left out of the lineup here this evening. Prexler sends one towards goal. They score! Out of nowhere, TJ Prexler just tossed one towards goal in between the circle and the wall. And he finds pay dirt. So Prexler showing a prime example of why they say put it on the net, good things can happen. Because that was not intended to go in, I can guarantee you. Oh, baby, what a hit over on the far side as Jones lays out Ryan Carlson. Really clean hit, though. This one will go the length of the ice, and now we'll have an icing call against the Hawkeyes. So similar to last night's game, Hawkeyes were getting the better of the shot total, but it was the Saints that struck first, and that's one that uh, Yasiancio would like to have back, because I kind of think that one went off of the inside of his blocker. Far side half wall picked up by Gagan. In behind the goal now. Serve back out in front. Score! Stavro! So goals at 15.03 and 15.43. Stavrow with an emphatic finish to make it two to nothing, Maryville. Delayed offside, allows Iowa to get it over on the far boards. Kind of a late hit there by Rye, needs to watch that. There is a trail official. Rye coming all the way from Chelsea in the United Kingdom. Can't say I'm too much of a fan of their football club, but being a Liverpool fan, but we'll let that one slide. Backhanded chance, blocked. Good job to get in front of the Norby shot. Romerol to save on a long drive towards goal. Under three and a half to go here in the first period. A very disjointed period in the first 10 minutes or so, but it seemed like once both teams got power play opportunities, the offense kind of finally started to find a little bit of life. Harrison puts one back out in front, all the way out to Thompson. He takes a wrister, diving block by Dudzik. Backhanded deeper into the zone as Alvagrand kept it alive. Hawkeyes just chip it in here on the near wing. Thompson back to collect for the Saints. Fans on the exit. Second attempt gets it high off the glass, but again, not up. Lepore using his size to keep it in along the wall. Now we've got another whistle. There's an initial penalty. I believe that was going to go against Iowa, but the Saints lost their cool just a little bit, so we'll see what the, what the uh, final verdict is. First man into the box is going to be Dean Dudzik for the Hawkeyes. It does look like there's going to be an additional call made against 
Kyle Dunville as well. So both penalties up on the board. And we'll skate for a side, so a little bit more open ice. And given the speed of the Saints, that might benefit them. Iowa, slightly better defensive team. So they like to use the numbers to kind of crowd things. Lifted in by Vigors after a good save was made by Romerill, and now we're gonna have a four on three power play. Tripping the call. Into the box goes Matthew Wilson. So the Saints to their second power play of the evening. So now there's gonna be a lot of open ice. Four on three power play chance here for Maryville. They send out Jones, Boudreau, Vigors, and Stavrow. Boudreau gets it off the draw. Jones has it at the point. Near side now for Boudreau. Top of the circle, straightaway point, far circle, tic-tac-toe. Jones with a ripper and a pad save made. Hawkeyes were able to get there and clear it out. 2-10 left to go of the period. 2-0 lead for the Saints. Just a little over a minute and a half left in this four on three power play. There's a big check here on the near side as Nudson took out Stavro about five feet after he came in the zone. Saints back to set it up in their own end. Here comes Boudreaux crossing the blue line, brings it over to the right circle. Puts it out in front in a great defensive play although I'm not sure that Knudsen knew where it was. At the point, Jones gives it far side, Stavro slows it up, near side, Boudreaux out in front, puck trickling along and they couldn't get it. Stavro peels back, saucer pass from Jones. Jones with a shot blocked in front and the Hawkeyes clear. Long stretch pass finds Boudreaux at the line but he's all by himself. He tosses one in below the end line. Pressure coming in from Decker. Norby able to get it on the far side and he'll send it out. One last push up the ice. 50 seconds remaining in the period. And a high hoister and that one over the goal by MacArthur. It ends up deflecting out of play. They're gonna say that it went off the shoulder of the goaltender, and the, one of the Hawkeyes does not agree. So five on four for another 14 seconds, and then we'll all be back to even strength. Saints win the draw. MacArthur at the point, Juliuson goes rink wide with it. Trying to return the favor, Juliuson gets it along the end line. MacArthur wrists one, trying to find Harrison, back to five on five, so the Saints are 0 for two with the man advantage. Hawkeyes have it, side of their goal, to the far side half wall, settled down and neutralized by Kuhn. Brought into the attacking end. Horan was dispossessed along the circle. Saints able to poke that one out, and that should just about do it. Little tie up here along the near side. Puck goes out of play with 2.7 seconds remaining. They drop it, and there's the buzzer. 20 minutes in the books, and the Maryville Saints lead the Iowa Hawkeyes by a score of two to nothing. It was a somewhat slow, somewhat choppy first period to start things off. Both teams taking some penalties, 
And then once the power plays kind of got out there, got rolling a little bit, the offense started going for both teams. Iowa outshoots Maryville 10 to seven in that first period. But the important part is the Saints with two goals. The first one from TJ Prexler at 15.03, answered at 15.43 with Anthony Stavrow wristing one in from the left wing. I'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your second intermission, or excuse me, second period. Speaking of intermission, Eric Skelton gonna have your intermission report over on Facebook Live, so tune in for that. Back with the second period in just a bit.
Second period underway here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. Saints lead by a score of 2-0. Goals from Prexler and Stavrow in the first period of play. So the key for the rest of this game is going to be effort, I think, from the Maryville Saints, which is, it's always kind of a difficult th thing to say as a broadcaster because you don't want to say that the effort was not put in in a certain game here or there because that's not necessarily the case. But anybody who's played sports before knows that you can go out there, you can do everything that you think you can. But for some reason, just the body doesn't necessarily respond every single time or perhaps subconsciously you, you take a step back when you've got a little bit of a lead and that lead is held up for a while. And perhaps that might have been what happened in last night's game. So you just have to kind of keep mentally focused. And I think if the Saints can do that, they can pick up a victory here. But still, about 39 minutes before that is to be decided, and right now we're getting a lot more back and forth going on as we saw towards the beginning of the first period. Vigors kind of kicked at that one. This one hammer shot it up and over the goal. And the face off is going to stay in the neutral zone. Hawkeyes win the draw. Darby sends it over to the far side and then it's shoveled in around. Picked up there by Kuhn, but he can't quite find the handle. Saints do a good job of not icing this one as we saw so often in the first period and they calmly get it down the ice. Cycled around, but it's intercepted behind the net. Saints return the favor as uh, Boudreaux was able to pilfer that one away along the far side wall. The Hawkeyes jab it just past the pinching bonnet. MacArthur gives chase and slows it up in behind his own goal. Vigors exits the zone, clears the red line and dumps it in. Alvagran gives chase but outdueled by his counterpart Jake Carlson on the far wing. Hawkeyes sweep it up and then the rink wide puck goes into the safe hands of Dylan Thompson. Collision right in front of the Maryville bench took out one of the linesmen. Amarill has to come out to play this one. Is coming in was Dudzik. Danville jabs it, just barely gets it over the line. Lupori sweeps it right back in. Almost a giveaway there. Right along the end line. That was somewhat dangerous. Puck slips away from Simpson. Strange here in this early going of both periods, how it almost seems like neither team likes the fresh ice. And pucks just slipping away from sticks and players over skating. Passes not necessarily going where they intended. But now a chance to break out here for Dunville. Brings it in on the left wing, shoots for that near corner and it was open, but the puck just went a little too close to the post and ricocheted wide. Simpson back to chase it down, reverses it back into the neutral ice. Picked up by Harrison as he gloved it down and then takes it in. Pruitt slows it up as he's along the end wall, carries into the near side corner, left it there. And that was an easy pickup for Iowa. Jones outduels Lupori, who was coming in close on him. And now we get a whistle as uh, Fontana had lost his lid. Faceoff going to remain in the Saints offensive zone. 16-32 left to go here in the period. And apparently Fontana has to exit since his helmet came off. And there may be even a, uh, an equipment problem as it looked like the 
Coach Brooks was signaling to his trainer to pick up a new chin strap. Bad angle chance there from Pruitt goes off the uh, face of the crease, but nothing more. Didn't really even trouble the goaltender. Puck tied up in the corner. Four players, two aside. Nobody really coming up with it. And Blessing was too concerned to go with the hit there. Kind of missed on that one. And now an odd man rush for the Hawkeyes. And they almost connected from Zuski. Just had it kind of squirted away from him. Decker takes a wrister, deflected in front. And Romero got a piece of it on the way through. And then the rebound scores from the far side. Decker's the one that took the shot. Seemed like he was the one wanting credit for it. But the man out in front was Brody Brunzewski. So it'll be interesting to see who they give credit to that one for. So the goal comes at 4.09 of the second period. So the goal given to Devin Decker cuts the lead in half. It's two to one. Saints still on top. Puck ricochets off the end wall to the far boards. This one too far for Carlson on the long stretch pass. Saints get it out of their zone, but not under control. Reverse pass towards the near side, intercepted. Carlson once again puts it towards net. Puck bouncing around. You feel bad for Aaron Romero as he's played a solid game both nights, and it's just been a few bounces that haven't gone his way. Little saucer out of the zone there from Alvagran. But the Hawkeyes right back in on the attack. They try to put it into the slot. Bonnet sends it back out to the line, and the Saints chip it out. Hawkeyes with it in the neutral zone. Trying to send it into the blue line for Springberg. And now we kind of return to that disjointed play. And you have to give credit to the Hawkeyes because anytime a team plays a really heavy defensive style, that will cause a lot of this disjointed play as the wrist shot comes in from Vanetti and over the goal. So it's not as though neither team is really on their game. This is really kind of what the Hawkeyes want to come out of this one. And the Saints have only managed to disrupt it in flourishes here and there. Stavros been a big part of that one as he's walled off over in the far side corner and loses the puck. Kund sends it to the far wing, intercepted. Both teams jabbing at the puck right at the center red line. It ends up all the way in the Saints zone. Up the wall and just out of the reach of one of the Hawkeyes, but this is gonna be an icing call. No, they wave it off at the last moment. I've seen that happen quite a few times here in this game. A tie up here along the near boards in the corner. Gagan in there, surrounded by three Hawkeyes. Finally, Prexler comes in as well. Stavro jabbed at it, but he had a defender too close, couldn't get possession. Kuhn gives it up, Darby with the shot, didn't matter, offside. Face off in the neutral zone, just outside the Maryville line. Biggers took a spill after that puck was dumped in. He was kind of looking around to get the number of that truck. There's a man out in front for the Hawkeyes, but they can't get the pass from the left into the center. Backhanded up the near wall by Turner. 
kept alive by Vigors. He's turned around on the half wall, and now we're going to get a penalty. Cross checking will be the call. And the Hawkeyes are going to go back to the power play. Three goals scored in this game, neither of them from the power play, despite the fact that we are now up to four total, one for each team. Second power play of the game for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Wilson straightaway point, gives it over to the far circle. Now, Kund with a drive from the point. Wilson keeps it alive, just under the stick of Knudsen. Too far for Springberg as it ricochets on around here to the near side, and the Saints able to clear it down. Minute 35 left on the Hawkeye power play. They try to get it in on the far side, and that kind of bounced off the stick on the entry. Saints collect and send it out. Hawkeye fans still kind of reeling after that first goal scored against them, because the way this game has transpired, it could easily be 1-1. Kind of a lucky play that just went off the blocker of Iasiancio. That's why you put the puck on the net, and that's why the Saints have a goal lead instead of being tied. Turner intercepted that at the blue line, sends it back the other way. Nidson goes back the other wing, far side. Avoiding the hit was Jake Carlson, finds his man and scores! Out in front, Dean Dudzik finishes it off. Romero got a piece of it, but not enough to keep it out. Valiant effort from the Saints goaltender, but just too much space there, and Dudzik finished it. So two goals for the Saints in the first period, two goals for the Hawkeyes here in the second. So now we'll have the medal of the Saints tested here. And see what they're made of. Once they allowed Iowa to come back and tie things up last night, it didn't necessarily go the way that they would have liked. All about the response here this evening. Hawkeyes win the face off on the second attempt. Dudzik able to get it up into the attacking area. Now it's a two on one set across the ice, slapping at it and just barely missing the goal was Carlson and we get a stoppage the net was dislodged. Saints need to find a way to get some possession here as the shot came in off the faceoff. Another save by Romerol. This time it was Kuhn sending one in towards goal. Too much going the way of the Hawkeyes here in the second period. Face off one by the Saints, comes up the near board. Stavro has a hard time getting it off the wall, sends it off the dashers. Prexler was there, but it couldn't be handled cleanly. Gagan gives it up at center ice, and the Hawkeyes in on the attack. Off the skate of a defender, blasted in by Kuhn, and that one was difficult to deal with. Romero did so. But again, some nervy moments. Now Gagan brings it up, poke check in from behind. Back the other way, rink wide pass from Kuhn, finds his man on the far wing, into Decker, who's taken down. Prexler with a little bit of open ice, if he can get to that puck. 
And then his pass was not where it needed to be as it headed towards the blue line. Decker back to pick it up for the Hawkeyes. Hard off the near side boards. Won't go for icing as Jones put a stick out and slowed it up. Stavrow at the red line, brings it into the attacking zone. Prexler slowed up, tried to saucer one, got it through the wickets. Now here's a breakaway attempt. Skating in is McKay, sweeps one towards goal and is denied by Romero. Hawkeyes couldn't hold it in. Trying a transition game. Prexler dumps it in, gives chase. A little bit of a line change here for the Saints. Hawkeyes take advantage of that and bring it in on the near side. Springberg flips one on around. Romrill to slow it up. Picked up by his teammate right around behind the net. Lifted in towards center ice. Boudreaux gives chase. He'll get there before Darby. Boudreaux leaves it for Juliuson. Darby able to steal it away from Boudreaux. Set up the zone. McKay gives it off to Carlson. Ryan Carlson has it poked away. Boudreaux coming all the way back. Saints just clear this one down. And again, it could be an icing call and will be. Saints win the draw, get it over to the far board, still not out of their zone. Vigors sweeps it to center ice. Hawkeyes take it there, and Carlson brings it in on the near wing. Saved by Romero as that one came in towards goal. Kept alive now by Lupori. He puts it out in front. Romero with a save to deny him. On the doorstep, Jeffers and a diving attempt blocked. Back towards the top of the crease. Romero just can't find the puck to freeze it up. High Hawkeyes keep it in. Romero steers another one away. Dudzik, who has the tying goal, gets it down low below the end line. MacArthur trying to poke it loose. Instead, Juliuson had it, but only for a moment. Swept away. Pad save made on the shot from Lupori. Behind the goal again, Carlson puts it back out in front. Jake Carlson with space. Jeffers at the point. Saucers one back in for Jake Carlson. Out in front and just under the stick of Dudzik. Ryan Carlson was there as well. Vigors lost one in towards goal. Turned aside by Yaciancio. Dunville throws a check in from behind. Referee having a little word with him, but getting away with it. Dunville has it at his own blue line. It's the near side official. That was the linesman that got away. Dunville has the puck left for him there. Boudreaux joins him on the attack. Dunville to the circle and then a poke check made by Decker. Off the other way go the Hawkeyes. Left to right on your screen, clad in yellow and black. Decker puts it out in front, off the side of the goal. Romero spots it and will cover. Back and forth affair, but it's been all Hawkeyes here in the second period. They are out shooting the Saints 25 to 10 in total. And the score is two nothing if you only take this second period into account. Fortunately for Saints fans, you do have to count all two periods played thus far. So the score two two. Bouncing puck explodes out of the zone. Intercepted by Harrison in neutral ice. He ratchets one around. Decker picks it up for the Hawkeyes. Leaves it along the near side board. Saints hold the zone. Alvigren saucers one back in. Harrison was taken down in front. Referee says no penalty coming. Intercepted by Alvigren over on the far side, but the Hawkeyes steal it away and clear their zone. Lifted back up towards center. Off the glove of Dunville. Harrison backhands it in. Carried in behind his own goal by Norby. He plays it off the near wall. Kund looks for an escape route. Saints do a good job of holding it in, but they did so with a little too much vigor, and it's gonna be a penalty. Iowa going back to the man advantage. Interference the call. Kyle Dunville to the center.
So Coach Hogan not at all pleased with what he has seen. Once again, the second period kind of getting in the way of things after a pretty good first period overall. But some mental mistakes have really cost his team here and he is fired up over there on the bench as you see him getting in some players' faces. Not anybody in particular because this really is a, a team-wide issue. And it's been interesting. That's, that's one thing that I, you see it in baseball here and there, but it seems to be kind of a hockey-specific thing where you can get a team that has so much talent like we've seen it with the St. Louis Blues. You see it around the NHL. You see it all over hockey, really, where you have so many varying degrees of talent, but an entire team can have a good game or a bad game. And right now, it's just kind of a bad period so far for Maryville. They can't clear it out after they won the faceoff. Iowa sends it into the far side corner, swept around, but once again held by Wilson. And then it just barely snuck over his stick, so they have to regroup. 15 seconds off this power play already. A little over six minutes to go in the period. Intercepted by Jones in front. Oh, what a save for Amaro going post to post and denying the cross ice feed. It was Springberg. He scored yesterday. Thought he had another one here today, and perhaps it benefited the Saints that Springberg, a left handed shot, had to let that one come across his body before he could try to sweep it towards goal. Wilson with a drive, getting in front of it was Bonnet. Also there was Rye, went off of one of their sticks and out of play. Face off will come here on the near side on your screens to the left of goal. Just under six minutes to go here in the period. 126 left to go in the Iowa Hawkeyes power play. Saints do a much better job of getting this one out cleanly. Knudsen will set it up from his own end. Gives it off to Wilson. A little bit of a forecheck put on here by the Saints as they intercept it through the neutral zone. Good job by Rye. Gagan brings it in shorthanded, roughed up, taken down, penalty coming. Holding will be the call. I believe Springberg gonna be called for the offense. So Springberg, the man going to the bench. Wilson, the one in the penalty box. So two separate incidents. Springberg was the one that took Gagan to the ice after the play. So we'll skate four aside for 49 seconds. Saints now a little more pep in their step coming off of that one. The pass just too far for Stavrow. Along the far side boards with Lupori. Stavrow now if he can get that one to settle down and it just will not. He would have had a two on one. Harrison back to pick it up. Some of the fans here on the near side doing some hand wringing. Not sure if that's to warm themselves up or a little bit of nervous moments. And now we're gonna get another penalty as there was uh, players tied up in behind the net. We'll wait and see how this one shakes out. I have a feeling that it's gonna be the Saints going shorthanded again. Cross-checking the call. Nate Simpson into the box. So a chance to get onto the power play goes by the wayside. As we had not escaped the four on four, so now it'll be a four on three for Iowa. for 16 seconds. Then we'll go back to four on four, and then there will be a brief Iowa power play after that. Just under the stick of Decker. 
Turner putting on a little bit of a four check here. Decker open on the near side, instead taking it all the way coast to coast. Springberg sends it across, but harmlessly through the crease. MacArthur dumps one in. Saints get a man back, so it's four on four for another 40 seconds. Little over four minutes to go here in the period. 2-2 game, came into this second frame with the Saints leading by two. Maryville looking for an escape route. They'll bring it right up the middle. Now carrying it far side. Good stick work here by Jones. Puts it back out in front, but Juliuson was tied up. Juliuson smashed to the boards again as Decker roughs him up. Jones has to retreat as Iowa had too much in front of them. This one goes the length of the ice, though, on the zone exit. Came on the wrong side of the red line, so it's going to be an icing call. Four seconds left before Iowa will get another power play. So icing was the call there, and it came after the player returned, so Wilson was not able to get off for a line change. So Iowa still on the power play, but that gives Maryville a little bit of time to try to kill some more time off this clock, and now we've got another penalty as it looked like Bonnet was blown up there at the blue line. And going into the box is Spencer Lutka. Lutka not happy with that at all. So five power plays go by the wayside for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And that's a five minute major. So Lutka gonna spend the rest of this period in the box. And this is a situation the Saints just have to take advantage of somehow. Hawkeyes win the draw though. Saucer went over towards the far wall and get it out. Now there's another penalty upcoming and we're gonna have another penalty call. I mean, this is getting a little bit ridiculous. Interference the call. And it's gonna be Spencer Turner going into the box. I mean, I understand that you want to try to keep the game under control, but and Coach Hogan not happy at all, understandably. I can't say that there wasn't a collision over here on the near side, there was, but they've been letting a lot go. Some of the calls that they've been making for both sides, admittedly, this isn't as so trying to be a homer or anything. It, both teams have been given questionable penalties, to, to say the least. So not necessarily the best day overall for the men in the stripes. Chance here now for Jones, a backhand towards goal, and another penalty handed out. I mean, by the time we're done with this game, you might as well just put everybody in the box. Knudsen was called for the initial one. That was going to be a hooking call, and uh, I think he might have said a little too much as well. So this game just kind of dissolving into chaos. Penalties all over the board here. They don't even have enough space up on the scoreboard to keep everybody straight. There's three players in the box for Iowa, two for Maryville. The two for Maryville were already in there as that's um, Turner and Simpson. Five seconds left until Simpson comes back. 
They go point to circle and almost connect with Stavrow. Now there's a man back for Maryville. Jones has it straight away point, comes to the near side circle just underneath the stick of Stavrow. Stavrow keeps it alive to the point, out of the far circle. Jones, Stavrow, once again, the puck just slips away from him. Now Jones scores! Josh Jones with the blast from the blue line, and it's 3-2 Maryville. So I said it moments ago that somehow, some way, the Saints needed to take advantage of all these penalties being handed out. And finally they do. So power play goal for the Maryville Saints. One for three. Hawkeyes can't get it out. Stavro has it. He's roughed up by Decker in behind the goal. Now a little bit of space. Hawkeyes get it. Backhanded in. Stepping in front of Kuhn was Jones. He's almost cross-checked into the wall. You have to figure, obviously, we don't want hockey to go the way of soccer, but if, if Jones had gone down, that probably would have been another penalty the way this game has gone. Still 28 seconds remaining on the penalty to Turner, once that is up, there's gonna be more power play time coming up for Maryville. Saints win the draw, get it over to the far corner. It's tied up there. Picked up by MacArthur and he reverses back behind his own goal. Leaves it for Juliuson and then gets the return pass. Gagan here on the near wing, brings it up through neutral ice, trying to find Juliuson, who is skating over the Maryville logo. He overskates in the corner, as does Gagan, as the puck kind of got caught up in some of the snow. Now it's back to a Saints power play, five on four, short-handed opportunity, and they score! Lupori with the wrist shot from the near circle, and it sneaks into the far netting. So a shorthanded goal for Zach Lupori ties it at three. I think Romero was a little bit surprised with the speed of that shot as Lupori came in. And Romero wasn't cheating or anything. He was in good position, but that just exploded off the stick and just snuck under the blocker and into that far netting. Under a minute to go here, still a Saints power play. Pass lifted onto the near circle. Stavro trying to avoid the four check there as there's a lot of stick work going on. Decker pokes that one away. Boudreau has it in the corner for the Saints as they have to set up with under 30 seconds to go. Jones straightaway point, now far side. Jones gets it back at the blue line. Far side again, this time top of the circle. Give and go. Now it's Stavro here on the near circle. Lost control of the puck. Jones hammers it towards goal. Boudreau was there if a rebound was there. Unfortunately for him, it bounded the other direction. Wristed towards goal, Springberg blocks the initial attempt, and there we go. 40 minutes in the books. It's been a back and forth affair. Three, three, your score after two periods of play. A lot of goals scored there in the second period. It was two nothing Maryville after one, and now it is 3-3 three, three after two.
two assists in the first minute and two already. nothing uh, lead against Iowa today. How are you doing today? Uh, good, good. So, uh, kind of
Hey Saints Nation, it's Eric with the second intermission report with you. I'm here with Josh Jones. He scored the th uh, third goal for Maryville today on a one-timer. Josh, nice shot, man. That was really pretty. Thanks. Uh, that all starts with uh, guys getting in on the puck, winning battles, good screens, good puck movement. Yeah, just found, got lucky, got it in. So we go up 3-2 to two on Iowa, and they have a quick answer. What kind of things are you guys going to work on to kind of keep them from answering back so quickly? I know we had two quick goals in the first, and they responded right away. What are some things we're going to do to kind of shut them down? Uh, just discipline hockey, including myself. No dumb penalties. Uh, as long as we're out of the box, the puck shouldn't be in our end. Uh, simple hockey, pucks deep, go to work, and uh, get them running around. Awesome. I don't want to take any more of your time. I want to keep this real sweet. I know you got one more period to play. So uh, we'll let you get a little bit of rest. Saints Nation, I'll be at with you. Post-game report with John Hogan at the end of the game. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you at the end of the game. Welcome back to the Maryville University Hockey Center. Just about set to drop the puck on the third period between your Maryville Saints and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Maryville will open up this third period with a power play as there's still 137 to be served on that five minute penalty against Spencer Lutka. So we'll start things off five on four, but the Hawkeyes win it and kill off some time as they send it down into the Maryville zone. Over skating is Harrison. Not sure if that hit a rut on the ice, but we've seen that in all three periods now where it almost seems like the fresh ice is not necessarily beneficial to either one of these teams as there's been a lot of passes like that one where there's just a little too much on them or um, the puck's just kind of not settling down and slicking under sticks like that. So and another disjointed start to a third period here, but why not? It's been that kind of game all game long for both teams. 
Second day in a row that we've gone into the third period all tied up. Score line a little different. As this one wrestled in from the blue line as MacArthur took the shot. MacArthur does a good job of holding it in. Serves one up into the corner. Return passes. MacArthur's at the point. Near side, Juliuson just outside the circle. MacArthur straight away. Shot in. Rebound there. Put just wide by Gagan. MacArthur backhands it to the half wall this time. Gagan down low. Shot blocked. Norby was there. Norby taken to the wall. Rister and a save by Yasiancio. Juliuson goes to the far circle. Out in front. Gagan just barely missed. The puck might have rolled on him. Juliuson keeps it alive. Blessing. Gagan in the corner now. Man tied up. And there's another penalty coming. Just as soon as he got out of the box, Spencer Luck goes right back into it, so the Saints will go back on to another power play. Fifth power play of the game for the Saints. Broken stick there, that belongs to Horan. Out in front, Prexler denied! If he could have one-timed that, it would have been a goal. He had to kind of settle the puck down before he could take a wrist shot, and that made it really difficult. on around to the point now for Jones. Now the circle, Prexler with a shot. He was going for the far side and it was met with a pad save. Jones gives it up to Prexler who's at the point. Jones to the top of the circle. Slices his way nicely through two defenders. Jones top of the circle again. Rink wide, wrist shot in. Save made, puck back out top. Trexler with the drive. That one turned aside by a defender. Getting in front was Springberg. Trexler again straight away. Takes the slap shot. Blocked again. Jones absorbs the little hack there. And then the bouncing puck couldn't be settled down by Prexler. 30 seconds left in the Saints power play. Up the near hand side. Backhanded in by Stavro. Giving chase is Norby. He's taken to the wall. Stavro along the end line. Gives it out to MacArthur. Stavro again. Peels back away from the defensive pressure. Puck loose in the corner. Boudreaux. Stavro as they exchange places here on the near wing. Stavro to Boudreaux along the end line. Puts it out in front. And it's denied. Face off coming out. Or no, the official saying no line change there for Iowa. Not sure what the reasoning is. Ah, the net was dislodged. So another power play comes and goes for Maryville. One for five. Iowa Ofer, they also have five. A lot of penalties being called in these two games between these two teams. Saints win it, Bonnet with the wrist shot, trickling through, but it ends up wide into the near corner. Harrison blindly tosses one towards goal, ends up in behind the net, ricochets all the way back out and finally cleared away. Bonnet to the near side for Harrison, sweeps it up the ice, nobody there in black. Iowa goes rink wide with it. A little too far behind Jeffers. Knocks it into the zone though. Bonnet has it in behind his own goal. Far side intended that one for MacArthur. He does get it up the wall. Lifted pass towards center. 
picked up there, and now we're going to have a tripping call. A lot of hand signals going on here. The initial call was going to be against uh, Jake Vanetti, and there is an answer now. Dunville going into the box. And Dunville's actually going to the locker room, so he might be done. And that's a mental error there. Is the Saints were gonna go back to the power play. So Dunville has gone off. His penalty will be served by somebody else. And it was the initial call against Jake Vanetti. Coach Hogan just kind of frustratingly leaning up against the wall on the far side. Doesn't know what else to do about this one. Obviously, I don't think he's overly pleased with how his team has responded in this game, but the officiating, I mean, it's been even for both sides. You have to say that. In the end, that's really all you can ask, that it's being called the same way, but just so many penalties being handed out. So the Hawkeyes have the puck matching minors, so everybody stays with the same amount of players. Both teams do lose a man. Turner gonna bring it up here on the near wing two on three, so he has to just kind of wrist one towards goal. Yes, Yancio will glove it down and there'll be an offensive zone face off for the Saints. Trying to get that one out in front. There was a little bit of space there, but the puck just away from Stavro. He gets one to MacArthur. His shot got all the way through and a save was made. Bonnet kicks at it, has it chopped away from him though. Now a breakout here for the Hawkeyes. Shot in from Carlson is blocked. Puck out of play. Face off coming in the same zone. Saints able to come up with possession off the faceoff, not necessarily cleanly. Stavro brings it in, tries to toss it out in front. Man tied up, surprisingly no penalty call. Not saying there should have been, but just the way things have gone. Seems like anybody's gone to the ice and they put the arm up. Saints with a chance to get it back in on the attack. Stavro glides through the high slot, shot blocked. Norby fires one over towards the near side. That will escape giving Chase is Thompson. It wasn't far enough for icing though. 30 seconds left and we'll be back to five on five. Thompson fans on the clearance, so has to resize things over behind the net. Thompson drives up the left, backhands it into the zone, but right onto the stick of Wilson who doesn't play for the same team. Pass too far behind Lupori and this will be an icing call. Eight seconds left on the matching minors. 13.28 left to go in the period. So Kyle Dunville's day is done. But right now the Saints more concerned with trying to find the go-ahead goal as are the Hawkeyes. For all the penalties that have been handed out in this one, it's kind of surprising we've only had one power play goal. A little bit of miscommunication on the line change there. Pruitt had to leave. Saints initially won the draw, but it ended up kind of tied up along the dot. Maryville fires it right back in on the far wing. Rebounds all the way over here to the near side. Almost set up attack for Kevin Horan. 
He had his pocket picked by Thompson, who bangs one off the dashers. Hawkeyes have it in their own zone. Lifted on to center, going blue line to blue line. Thompson again off the wall. Pruitt gets it back from Alvagram, just a bit too far from him, though. Hawkeyes collect as Wilson spins away from pressure. Kuhn left it, but not necessarily on purpose. Just away from Gagan as he enters the zone. Hammers one for Pruitt behind the net, but he's muscled off the puck. Alvagran throws the check down low, and now there's another penalty coming, elbowing the call this time. And the Saints will go on a penalty kill. Well, I, the referee can't seem to make up his mind. Initially, it looked like he went with elbowing. Then it looked like he signaled roughing. Regardless of what the call is, it's uh, Christian Alvagran in the box. So the Hawkeyes with a chance to take their first lead of the game. They can score here on the power play. Sixth power play of the game for Iowa. Near side point is with Knudsen. He gets it back after it went down low to the half wall. Wilson keeps it in over on the far side, trickling along below the end line. Kept alive by Horan, he puts it out. Wilson's shot is blocked, and then Rye heads to the bench. Hawkeyes fire it up the ice from their own zone. Springberg brings it in, avoids the check along the near side wall. They put it out in front. Ryan Carlson was trying to get it over to Horan, and now we have a stoppage as the net was knocked off. Twelve oh eight remaining here in the period. 3-3 three, three your score. Maryville got a goal from Stavro and Prexler back in the first. Hawkeyes would answer with three in the third. The first two were scored by Decker and then Dudzik. Josh Jones would briefly take the lead back for the Saints with a shot from the blue line in the second period, but that was quickly answered by Zach Lepuri as he ripped one in from the left circle. Saints get it into the neutral zone, but not much past the red line. Uh, surprisingly, that didn't get called. That one looked like it could have been high sticking there on Harrison. Nevertheless, the Hawkeyes get it in on the near circle, far circle. It's been that kind of game. They keep it alive on the power play. Wilson shot block. Carlson from the near circle. That's Ryan Carlson. Tried to put it in front. Wilson with a slapper. That didn't get through. Too many bodies in front. And now Rye will backhand it up, but not out. Diving for it. Still stayed in, though. Second attempt by Harrison actually kept that in instead of knocking it out. Harrison got it to center. That'll allow a couple players to get off on a line change. Off the cuff of the glove, not easily handled there by Romero, so the puck's still alive. 20 seconds left, shorthanded opportunity. Gagan puts it towards goal, and that nibbled off the blocker and goes wide. Boards to boards. No icing, though, for some reason. Banged right back off the dashers, out in center ice, picked up by Dudzik. Carried in on the far side. High shot off the blocker of Romero. Might have been going wide anyway, but he elects not to take any chances. Another stoppage, 10.37 left to go here in the period. 3-3 game. Backhanded up the wall, intending that one for Prexler. It does escape the zone. Stavra was stood up, but he had crossed the blue line before the puck, so it was a delayed offside. Wristed right back in, off an Iowa player, so it should stay right around this zone. Having a discussion as to where the faceoff is gonna be. I believe they're gonna take it out of the attacking zone.
So just shy of the Iowa line. Coach Hogan having a few extra words with the official over by the bench. Face off taken. Iowa able to push it forward. Jones has it in behind his own goal. Maryville looking for its second win of the year, second win on home ice as well. Drexler was bumped off the puck as he got it into the zone. Gagan picks it up behind the cage, leaves it for Stavro. He has it jabbed away as Norby put a stick into it. Hawkeyes lift it up and that collides with one of the rafters. So we'll have another stoppage. Boudreaux in the faceoff, the puck bounced. I'm not sure I've ever seen a linesman slam a puck down with that much force. Backhanded into the corner, Boudreaux gives chase, picks it up, Jeffers jabs it away. Vigors joins the fracas and was knocked off the puck. Loose along the boards, Boudreaux has it at the blue line and it has to be backhanded into the corner by Vigors after it had just slipped away from Boudreaux. Loose in front, Juliusen puts it across but just wide of the goal. Jeffers joined by Fontana. They jab at the puck for the Hawkeyes. Boudreaux and Juliusen in there for the Saints. Hawkeyes come out with it. Near side along the wall, McKay looks up the ice. He took a slip and then didn't get it much past the neutral zone, but an offside call against Maryville. Once again, a lot of shots being taken here by both teams, 50 in total. Shot difference favoring Iowa right now, 30 to 20. Neutral zone faceoff, won by Maryville. Thompson tried to dump it in and didn't get it very far. Now slip by Thompson as he blew a tire. They try to go short side on Romerol and they almost snuck it in. That looked like it might have gone off his shoulder and in and somehow stayed out. Jake Carlson was jabbing at the loose puck along the side of the goal, and Romero was able to keep it covered just long enough to draw the whistle. Ryan Carlson gets it back to Wilson. Wilson takes a shot, that goes over the goal, and I don't believe Romero even knew it was coming. Springberg lifts one back into the cornerson, but Harrison stays there. Springberg again, this time along the half wall. He's tied up as uh, Simpson has him pinned to the boards. Another shot wide of the goal, again trying from a bad angle. Iowa just sending anything and everything towards goal, and that's kind of a interesting situation as we've seen some two teams do that uh, across the hockey landscape. Sometimes it works for you and sometimes it just gets the goalie hot. Shot came in from the far side. Stavro after the interception drove in, but there wasn't too much there as the Asiancio had come out to cut off the angle. Face off in the attacking zone though for the Saints. Wrist it out, and now a chance for the Hawkeyes on the counter. They put it in front, they score! Set up by Zach Lepore, and the Hawkeyes finish it off. Four to three is your score. Lepore was celebrating as though he's the one that scored it. He's the one that put it in front. Didzik was there, so either it went off a defender's stick and Lepore will get credit, or Dudzik has his second. The 
Dudzik does get the goal. So two goals for Dean Dudzik. And now the Saints will have to try to catch up for the first time this season. Second time this year they've trailed. Second time that they've given up a go-ahead goal to Iowa in the third period. Off taken unfairly there, so they'll do it again. Maryville going with the forward line of Prexler, Stavro, and Gagan. And another mistaken face off as the trail official wasn't quite set. Bouncing puck, colliding with legs and skates everywhere. Hawkeyes end up with it in the neutral zone. Bonnet slams his way into Dudzik. Dudzik still gets it into the zone, however. Now the puck loose in the slot. Dudzik with a shot and Bonnet blocks. Saints trying to escape on the far wing. They get it out of the zone, but it was met there by Knudsen, and he sends it right back in. Prexler along the near wing, crosses the red line and sends it towards the blue, but that one intercepted. Back the other way, Vanetti left it for Lutka. Maryville able to intercept, and now they look to break out. Three on two if they hurry. Prexler slows it up, though, and then blindly puts it towards goal. In behind the net, Prexler able to steal it away. To the point, Jones with a shot deflected a couple times on the way through. That took some of the steam off of it. Jones with another opportunity. Turner calling for it, though. He slows things up and serves one in behind the net. Prexler again from the far side. Jones with a little lift shot. Had some arc on it, but couldn't get it on goal. All the way down behind the Maryville bench. Five minutes and change left to go here in the third period. The Hawkeyes lead by a goal. Brought in on the near wing, Jones able to avoid most of that check by Wilson, but it was enough to separate him from the puck. Springberg brings it across the blue line and then dumps it in, gives chase. Stavro is there, Romero comes out to play it. Right into a Hawkeyes player. They try to catch him out of the goal, but the shot goes wide. Turner brings it across the red line and dumps it in. Saints changing their lines though. This one high off the glass, back out to center. Simpson puts one near the crease. Iasiancio was able to steer that one away. Juliuson left one for Boudreaux, but he overskated. Bonnet does a good job to hold it in. Diving defensive play, able to avoid a shot attempt there. Counterattack possibilities here for the Hawkeyes. They find Wilson, but it just bounded off his stick and went into the corner. Popped back out in front, Romero gloves it, and we'll get a stoppage. Four forty-two. Left here in the third period. Saints win the draw. MacArthur filtered it through behind the net, but then it's given right back at center. Delayed offside allows Maryville to recollect in behind their own goal. Saints bring it up the middle, gliding towards the far wing. Not too much space to be had though. About as close to the old school neutral zone trap as you can get in today's hockey with Iowa placing two players at each blue line and then one guarding the center.
So a conference between the officials. They decide that the faceoff is going to stay at center ice. Hawkeyes win the draw. Far side, it's with Decker. Saints get it in on the offensive end. Stavro was tied up. Hawkeyes haven't hit off one of the stanchions, but they still break out three on two. And then an unnecessary pass there by Lupori ends up in an icing call. It's just been an odd game, to say the least, for both of these two teams. Lupori had space to take it into the zone if he wanted, and instead he puts it over here towards the near wing. He did have a teammate on that side, but the pass really nowhere near where it needed to be. So it's been an odd game. This is the kind of game that you would have expected last night with Friday the 13th and a full moon, and instead we get it on the 14th. Simpson chases it down in the far corner, picked up now by Turner, gives it back to Simpson as they give and go. Up through the middle for Prexler. He finds a man far side, but then he forgot about the puck. Chance to break up ice for Lupori, but he couldn't quite gain control. Back and forth, puck won't settle down now. Caught up in some of the snow here along the near boards. Saints trying to gain the offensive zone, delayed off sides. Under three and a half to go here in the third. Similar instance, perhaps even more heart-wrenching if the scoreline remains the same for the Saints. Yesterday, they had a one to nothing lead, had that carry into the second period. Saw that melt away and lose by one. Today, they had a two goal lead in the first period. And they've seen that melt away and similarly give up the go ahead goal here in the third. Still time to answer though. Bonnet puts it towards goal, but it was blocked in front. Rebound bounds into the corner. Juliusen has it. Tries to give it up to Vigors. He wants to stuff it, but there was too many defenders. Juliusen from the corner. Bonnet at the point. Far side now. Wrist shot in from MacArthur. That doesn't get through. Boudreaux tries to sweep at it, but again, just too many yellow jerseys in front. Hawkeyes will dump it in. This time they had plenty of room, so no icing. 2.40 left, and then there's a giveaway along the far side boards. Iowa just kind of gives it right back. Saints will take that little gift. Up to Boudreaux at center as he lifts it into the far side corner. Wilson trying to repay the favor over the head of MacArthur. And now we'll get a hand pass. Last minute line change as MacArthur heads off, avoids the too many men on the ice penalty against the Saints. Prexler gets the puck here on the near wing. Lifts one into the zone. The question is, where was he on the red line? Correctly on, and no icing is the call. Hawkeyes get it up towards the middle of the ice, but not much further past the red line. Intercepted on the way through by Jones. Gives it off to Stavrow, going with four forwards right now. Romero heads off to the bench. Extra attacker on now for the Saints, but the Hawkeyes able to clear it out. This one rolling towards the goal, but it'll end up peeling off. Still no icing, no. Under two minutes to go here in the third period. Saints trying to avoid falling to one and two on the year. Chance on the far wing. Rye just outside the circle. Stavrow at the blue line. They exchange places. Puck comes all the way through. Jones has to peel back. Rye, straightaway point, avoids the pressure. First time, not the second time. Jones able to avoid the diving defender. Wrists one high into the near side corner. Picked up by Iowa though, and they will ice the puck. That's one of those instances when the new hybrid rule definitely pays dividends for the team that's behind. Iowa, interestingly enough, going to take a timeout, perhaps sensing that their 
defenders were fatigued and out of sorts. But this also gives Coach Hogan a chance to try to set something up with his players as well. These are the kind of moments that can build a team. If you can get something going here and really show yourself with a tying goal here in the dying moments of this contest. Iowa coming out of their own timeout, first out of it. John Hogan going to keep the net empty for Maryville. They send out Stavro, Gagan, Boudreau, Jones. And there was one or two players that I didn't see. Shot in, rebound, oh, what a save! It was there, Gagan dove after it, swept it towards the goal, but flashing out the left pad was Ryan Yasiancio. And for the second night in a row, the Iowa goaltender has managed to come out with an unbelievable save to keep his team in the lead. Almost a mirror image of what we saw last night where it seemed like it had to be a goal. This time it's a pad save instead of a glove save. Good job to hold it in at the point. Jones wrists one towards goal, bounces off a couple players. Prexler has it in the corner. Stavrow, near circle, high slot, gets it down to the corner for Prexler again. Stavrow, playing catch with Jones. Prexler didn't have too much space. Vigors near side, in front, denied! Net dislodged as there were players down. I believe that was Boudreaux trying to set up the screen. Faceoff should stay inside the zone. These are the chances that you just have to find a way to get in the back of the net. Fantastic effort here from Maryville in the last couple minutes, but not a finish yet. Jones, diving block there from Springberg. Kept alive, wrist shot again. Just too many bodies, but the Saints keep it alive. Still stick handling. Gagan, wrist shot. Black in front, score! 4.2 seconds left, and the Saints tie it up. TJ Prexler with his second goal of the game, and we're all knotted up for a piece. There were plenty of players in front there. It looked like Prexler was the one to get the last touch on it. And the faceoff taken. That'll do it. Regulation time is done. 60 minutes, not enough to contain this game. What a game we've had for you here this evening. A 4-4 your score after 60 minutes, heading to overtime for the first time this season. So we'll skate. Another five minute session here. 
both teams trying to get everything settled here. Somebody just went off to the locker room for Maryville. Looked like it would have been an equipment issue. Couldn't really get you a number there to see who that was. Coach Hogan having a few words with his team, as is Kevin Brooks with the Hawkeyes. This one looked like it was being written with the same storybook as we saw yesterday with Iowa coming back from a deficit and sneaking away with a one goal win in the third period. It's Tim Rye and TJ Prexler coming back from the locker room. So now they just wait to see who's put out on the ice for the overtime period. So three on three hockey in overtime. Try to keep up with the action here as three on three can get a little crazy. This one's an early icing call as that came from the wrong side of the red line. So a good chance now for Maryville if they can win this face off to get something set up. Only seven seconds ticked off the clock here in overtime. Juliuson trying to keep it alive. Stavro, a little faint move towards goal. Tries to peel back into the corner. Iowa right on him. And then the pass to Juliuson went awry. And now here comes Iowa on the break. Bringing it in on the right wing. Shot in from Lupori. And Romerol able to make the save. Shots 34 to 27 in favor of Iowa. But it's been a back and forth contest. Both teams have a two goal scorer with them. TJ Prexler with two goals for Maryville. Dean Dudzik with two goals on the board for Iowa. Maryville trying to be a little more methodical, but still even with three men on the ice, difficult to break down this Iowa defense. Here comes Harrison, drives towards goal. Couldn't quite get it in and then he swept it wide. Harrison on the circle, served one out in front. And MacArthur will have to retreat all the way back to his own zone after Iowa was able to tip it out. Here comes Harrison on the right wing, drives in towards the end line, all the way behind the goal. Good little poke check from Ryan Carlson, stole that one away. And then this one might be another icing call, and it will be. Iowa trying the stretch pass, but they seem to be a little bit uncomfortable here at three on three. Decker gets the puck off the face off to Vinetti up the ice, his pass too far behind Dean Dudzik. Check that, it's actually Ryan Carlson. Now Vigors goes the other way after stealing it at the blue line. Serves one in front for Stavrow. He cuts his way past the defender, but then the second one joining was too many. Jones, Stavrow, wrist shot just over the goal. All the way back down the ice and another icing call. So Maryville getting the bulk of the offensive zone time here as Iowa struggling to find some zone exits. Tired legs out on the ice for the Hawkeyes as well. Springberg taking his sweet time to get in the faceoff circle. Hawkeyes do win the faceoff though as it goes behind the goal for Norby. He looks for an escape route, comes near side for Springberg. Rink wide stretch pass, now gets it to Carlson. He got all the way through. He was looking around as he was taken to the ice, but we will not have a power play here in overtime, at least not on that play. Saints look to charge up the other way. 
Near side now for Harrison as he slowly crosses the blue line. Tried to put one in front to Juliuson, but instead it ended up as a shot. Harrison on the far circle, backhands one into the slot, but nobody home. Loose puck at center. MacArthur goes far side for Harrison. Harrison takes a slap shot, that one blocked by Norby. He goes off on a two-on-one break. Iowa gets it into the offensive zone. Norby puts it out in front, shot just wide by Jake Carlson. That could have been the finisher. Now a wrist shot in from Horan, and that goes wide. Chance to go the other way for Maryville, and it got caught up again. A wrist shot this time from Wilson. Romero couldn't corral the rebound, but he made the initial save, and that's all that was needed. Puck over towards the far side. A lot of snow along the boards. Puck getting caught up. Doesn't want to stay down. Now a giveaway in front. Try to stuff it in. Pass save by Romero. There will be a penalty called this time. And hooking is the call. It would have been interesting to see how that could have unfolded if the stick had been removed after the save was made. Nevertheless, it's Josh Jones in the sin bin. So, Maryville will finish this game shorthanded, one way or the other. A shot in, blocked by Bonnet, sweeps it up towards the blue line, but kept in by Knudsen. He pinches in from the point, sends it to Wilson far side. They get it down low to the end line, trying to set something up, and a shoulder save made by Romero as Venetti put it in from the circle. Venetti again, puck loose. Don't think that one got all the way through to Romero. It was blocked in front, and this one goes into the protective netting and out of play. Six left to go here in the overtime period. Aaron Romero getting his uh, mask sorted out. Springberg got his break, so it's him and Tim Rye in the faceoff circle. And the Saints get a hold of it. Backhanded up and out. Good job by MacArthur to clear it out. Final minute of play here. Norby leaves it, takes it back. Looks up ice onto the stick of Springburn. He gains the offensive zone, leaves it on. Decker, Norby wanted to take the slapper, but the pass wasn't where it needed to be. His dish was too hot for Lepore. Norby again, fakes the shot, gets it out in front, rink wide pass went through the crease and out of the zone. Decker brings it back in quickly though. 20 seconds left in the corner. Iowa sets it up. Vanetti gets it out and Maryville just couldn't clear. The puck was loose in the high, high slot but just out of the reach of Harrison. Seven seconds left. Decker from the circle shoots and that didn't miss by much but the rebound going to escape. And we'll go to the shootout. Somewhat fitting that we see another shootout for the University of Maryville because their first ever win on home ice last season came in a shootout. Looking for their second win here at their brand new facility. And it is going to come in a way that uh, personally I don't care for, but there's a lot of teams, or excuse me, a lot of fans that do like the shootout. If you listen to Bernie Federko on any of the St. Louis Blues post-game shows, he thinks it's absolutely wonderful. As a goaltender myself, I, I liked the idea of being able to shut somebody down on the shootout, but it, it just doesn't necessarily seem 
like the best way ever to finish a game. But I also come from the soccer world, so a draw I never saw as being the end of the world either. But that's a, an argument that we could have uh, perhaps on the podcast sometime. Nevertheless, a win still within grasp for both of these teams. Juliuson gonna take the first shot for Maryville. Takes it from the center red line, crosses the blue right up through the slot, fakes the shot back, and chance denied. And now Iowa will get their crack at the goal. Aaron Romerol in between the pipes. Iowa's Jake Carlson skates in, picks up speed. He's denied by a sliding pad save. So both teams 0 for 1. Navrell will take the second opportunity now for Maryville. He picks it up, comes in with a little more speed than Juliuson did. Stavrell with the fake, score on the backhand. He did essentially the same move that Juliuson did, but he left himself more of an angle, and he puts it home. Evan Horan brings it in from the right, slows it up, shoots wide. Romero might have gotten a piece of it, but nevertheless, it's a missed opportunity for the Hawkeyes. TJ Prexler, the next shooter now for Maryville. Already has two goals. If he scores here, it won't count on his stats, but it will count towards the game. A lot of stick handling, trying to go five hole, and he lifted it up just a bit too much. Iasiancio was fooled, I think, but he had just enough of the position that he was able to get that one off the cuff of the glove and keep it out. Now here comes Vanetti for Iowa. Goes to the five hole and scores. So that ties things up. Vanetti very confident on that one as he went to the backhand, cutting it in slightly from the left, going back to the right. And as Romero went down, he just slid it through the wickets. Cole Bonnet, or Bonnet brings it in, slows it up, backhand chance. The, everybody has gone with the backhand so far for Maryville. And Bonnet denied with a sliding blocker save. Chance now for Iowa to take the lead, denied. Zach Lupori was, took the shot on the forehand. Alvergrand, the next shooter. He takes a shot right into the pad. That's no good. Fifth shooter of the game now for Iowa coming up. So we're basically in sudden death now. A chance for Dean Dudzik to end the game. He scored the go-ahead goal in the third and misses the net on the shootout.
Brad Boudreau, the next shooter now for Maryville. Going to bring it in a little more methodically. Going left to right. Shoot, score! Puts it in the upper 90. And now a save here from Aaron Romero or a missed shot from Springberg. And the Saints will have the victory. Springberg picks up the puck. Brings it in from the right, now into the slot. Fakes out the goaltender. Oh, baby, pad save. And it's a win for the Maryville Saints. What a turnaround for your Maryville Saints as they pick up the win here this evening in the shootout. Maryville went up by a score of two to nothing. Saw that one dry up after two. Maryville would take a three to two lead. Iowa would tie it up again. And then with 4.2 seconds left in the third, Maryville would find the tying goal after Iowa had taken the lead just a little over halfway through that third period and went all the way through overtime without a goal. And then in the shootout, it finishes up two to one in terms of people scoring in the shootout. Goals for Anthony Stabrow and Brad Boudreaux as he gets the winner in the shootout. The lone goal scored for Iowa coming off the stick of Jake Vanetti. So a big win for the Maryville program as they continue to try to build a great home atmosphere here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. Another really solid crowd here this evening. Make sure you come out, be a part of this program as it continues to build as they've got a really solid team year after year right now as they continue to pick up more and more. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. I believe we're gonna to try to have a, a post-game interview with Coach Hogan coming up in just a moment. So I will step aside just to kind of rest my voice. So come back, we'll give you a little bit more of the final score line, and then we'll get you that post-game interview. Don't go anywhere, more Maryville hockey in just a moment.
Welcome back to the Maryville University Hockey Center. Todd Panula along with you here this evening. Hopefully you enjoyed tonight's contest. Once again, the final uh, in overtime in a shootout. The Maryville Saints defeat the Iowa Hawkeyes in the official scorebook. It will go down as a 5-4 to four finish, but it goes all the way to the shootout. And Maryville wins in the shootout by a score of 2-1 to one there. Before we get our uh, interview coming up in just a few moments with Coach Hogan, I want to let you know how the scoring wrapped up in this contest. Maryville jumped out to a really solid 2 to nothing lead after the first period of play. And it was a goal from, that's in my notes here somewhere, TJ Prexler, excuse me, scored the first goal of the game, 15-03 of the first period. It was a really odd game. Basically, the start of all three periods were very choppy, very disjointed, very unorganized for both teams. A lot of passes didn't quite necessarily get onto their mark, and each team just seemed to have an odd feeling out period that you wouldn't expect necessarily in the second game of a two-game set. Nevertheless, Prexler scored from the right wing, just kind of blindly put a shot towards goal, and it ended up going in off the goaltender's blocker to give the Maryville Saints a 1-0 lead. Anthony Stavrow will double up the lead 30 seconds later as he would score with a fine wrist shot from the left circle this time. A little bit further out, a little more highlight reel worthy there from Stavrow. And the Saints, for the second time in as many days, would go into the intermission with a lead. This time it was 2 to nothing. But similar to, to what we saw last night, Iowa would come out and get the better of the play in the second period as they would score at 4.09 with Devin Decker scoring on a long shot to cut the lead in half. Then later on in the uh, second period, excuse me, it was Dean Dudzik scoring to tie things up. And then not long after that, Maryville would regain the lead, scoring their third goal of the game with a slap shot from the blue line as Josh Jones would score at 17.36 of the middle frame. And unfortunately for Maryville, the lead would not last too long there in the second period as it would be tied up with a shot from the left circle, Zach Lupori getting the tying goal at 18.57. So just a minute and three seconds left on the clock before that one would end. 40 minutes in the books, all tied up. We would go back and forth with a lot of hockey action in the third period, but it would be the Iowa Hawkeyes that would score. It was Dean Dudzik looking like he was going to have the game winner the way the game transpired. He scored at 12-14, kind of tipping one in on a loose puck over on the far side. And that one was going to hold up until the waning seconds of the third period. And then it was TJ Prexler scoring on the rebound at 19.56, so 4.2 seconds remaining in the third period. And Maryville would get this one into overtime. It would go the full length of overtime without anybody scoring and we would head into the shootout. The shootout pretty much matched the way that the regular game went as it was back and forth the entire way. We had Juliuson go in on the backhand, cut it a little too finely, couldn't quite get it in as he got too close towards the end line. The save was made. Second shooter for Second shooter, excuse me, for Maryville was going to be Anthony Stavrow. He would score. First two shooters for Iowa were denied. That was Jake Carlson and then Kevin Horan before the first goal for Iowa would be scored on a fantastic wrist shot from Jake Vanetti as he came in, got Aaron Romerl to bite just enough, and then was able to sneak that one in the five hole. The next couple shooters for Maryville would go empty. The next three shooters were TJ Prexler, Cole Bonnet, and Christian Alvergrand. They were unable to score, but the, th the next three shooters for Iowa were unable to score as well as Lupori, Dean Dudzik, and Nathan Springberg 
all came up just a little bit empty for Iowa. And then the final shooter of the evening was going to be Brad Boudreaux for Maryville University. And he gave the Saints the lead. And then Aaron Romero was able to make that final save on Springburg to get Maryville their second victory of the year. So Coach Hogan's squad improves now to two and one on the year, two and one on home ice as well. And that's a big thing that we thought about coming into this three game set is you needed to set some sort of a tone here on home ice because Maryville only picked up a total of five wins all season long on home ice last season. So this year needed to be a little bit different. You needed to have that new building come in and be somewhat of a fortress and be a difficult place to play. The University of Maryville has gotten a lot of good home support here. So picking up the victories needed to be the next thing that they could really pull off. Let's take a look at some of the schedule coming up for you here because this is gonna be our last broadcast for you for just a little while. Uh, two and one is the record now. And now Maryville is going to go the rest of September on the road. And most of, well, most of October basically as well. Uh, the next game that they are going to play is going to be on the road at the University of Central Oklahoma. That one's going to be an 8 p.m. puck drop. That one comes to you on September 19th. That's a Thursday, so another three-game set coming up for Maryville this coming week. And then after that, it's a couple games at the University of Oklahoma. So it'll be the Saints against the Sooners on September 20th and 21st. After that, they round out with a road game against Lindenwood. That one will be September 29th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, I believe that one's going to be played at the new Centene Center, which is where the St. Louis Blues practice. But uh, we have not received word as to whether we'll be doing that broadcast or not. We're going to try to bring it to you. But if not, then our next home game is not until November 8th when Waldorf will visit the Maryville University Hockey Center. So once again, the final score here, five to four in favor of Maryville over the University of Iowa. It's a shootout victory for the Saints. We continue to try to kind of wait here and see if we can uh, get a post-game interview with Coach Hogan, uh, Eric Skelton, downstairs recording that I believe as we speak so waiting on his return I'll take another quick break but don't go anywhere we'll still try to bring you that o interview with coach Hogan here in just a moment more Maryville Saints hockey in just a minute
Hey Saints Nation, I'm here with you after the game with our number one goalie right here, Aaron Ronaro. Go uh, game winning in the shootout, nail biter. But hey, you guys got it done. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it was a tough weekend. Uh, I think everybody's still kind of feeling themselves. So for us to be able to come back in that last you know 30 seconds of. Uh, of the third period and then uh, put in a strong OT and then you know, all the guys just put a couple in for, for the shootout so uh, we worked hard and, and, and that was great. Yeah I mean I, penalties seem to be a problem with you guys but you guys seem to clean it up there in the third period and uh, man Stavro, or not Stavro, uh, Prexler coming around and getting that goal last three seconds of the game to tie it up before overtime that was pretty awesome. Yeah uh, unfortunately penalties basketball days have been, uh, been a tough part for us. They're, you know, they're, they're a hard-hitting team out there, uh, and, you know, yeah, definitely, like you said, nail-biter, but, uh, you know, Prexler came in came in when we needed them, and, and we're going to need guys like that every every weekend. So now, now that they got Iowa behind you guys, you guys are looking forward to Central Oklahoma for on Friday, and the next weekend you got uh, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. um, what are some things you guys got to rest? What are you guys going to do to kind of shore up this yeah. week during practice? So, so, I mean, you know, first things first, you know, we're going to take a couple days off. Uh, I mean, you know, playing three in a row to start is, is always tough, and then, uh, we're going to work on some systems. Uh, I think our systems are lacking a little bit right now. Uh, you know, and, and just kind of kind of talk a little bit about discipline and stuff like that. But the uh, biggest thing going into the UCO weekend is, you know, staying, staying disciplined and using our speed. They're, they're, uh, they're a big team, and, and we're going to have to use that speed, so we'll practice that all week. All right, man. I'll let you go get out of here, shower up. Great Thank game. You. Congratulations on uh, tying it up for the season series against Iowa. Appreciate it. Saints Nation, stay tuned. I'll have Coach John Hogan with you in just a few minutes. All right, Saints Nation, I'm here with Coach John Hogan. Coach, congratulations on the win tonight. That was hard-fought battle, 5-4, to four, going in the shootout at the end of the game. Prexler had the big goal in the end of the third period with three seconds left. Kind of walk us through what was going on through uh, after that and what the kind of game plan was for overtime and shootout. Uh, well, the start, you know, we had a really good start. Um, we had a lot of film we went over. Um, again, we're, we're still trying to layer things on, but, but first off, we have to have a foundation of how to play hockey here. And we have 19 freshmen that, you know, we're still learning how to play college hockey. So not a good second period, and, you know, we got into some penalty trouble and the same in the third. So, um, you know, but when it came down to it, you know, you're just trying to put guys out there that have been working hard, that have earned it. Um, I always tell the guys that, um, you know, I don't, you know, make their ice time. They make it for themselves. So um, you have to earn it. So, um, again, Timmy Rye, Gaggin, those guys, they earned it. So put them out there at the end. Um, and, you know, TJ put it away. So, um, you know, it, it's fun. I'm, I'm glad we gave the crowd uh, something to cheer about. And um, we, we, I hope we learn a lot from our mistakes this weekend because that's why you play these exhibition games. That's why you play uh, teams like this early on because – um, we're, we're in for a hell of a weekend uh, against UCO, Oklahoma, Oklahoma next weekend. So we got to be ready to go. we got to learn from these mistakes uh, and be better for it moving forward. Awesome. Now, as you guys, uh, you know, after tonight, what are you guys kind of do? I know you guys are probably going to take a day or two off, you know, kind of recuperate, let the boys kind of rest. I know they're a little banged up, taking some shots yeah. today. So well, we'll probably, you know, Sunday I always go off. Monday we'll probably do some, uh, some film and then, back at it on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then we're, we're off to UCO on Thursday. So a uh, quick turnaround, but um, hopefully this, these things stay fresh in their heads. So, um, again, we can keep layering on and kind of check that off the list, check that off the list, and um, just keep building here. So, again, proud of the guys, how they played in the first. I'm glad we got to, to a, a little bit of our game. Now we just have to put that uh, on the ice for 60 minutes. All right, Coach. Well, I won't take up any more of your time. You know, I know you got things to do, places to be, and everything like that. Um, again, congratulations on the win tonight, and hope we'll be talking to you next weekend after a good series in Oklahoma. Yep, appreciate it. All right, thank you, Coach. All right, Saints Nation, this is Eric signing off for tonight. Next, uh, be, to, be sure to follow along with the, uh, the socials, Twitter, Instagram, as our Maryville Saints are on the road next weekend in Oklahoma, followed by uh, October or September 29th against Lindenwood coming up as well. As for that, I'll see you guys later. So there you have it, some post-game words from Aaron Romerill and Coach John Hogan. Once again, the Maryville Saints defeat the Iowa Hawkeyes. The official score will say 5-4. to four. It went to a shootout. The final in the shootout was 2-1. to one.
So that'll do it for our broadcast here this evening. Once again, Maryville will have a three-game set coming up next weekend. It'll all be on the road in Oklahoma, Central Oklahoma on the 19th, and then two games against the Sooners on the 20th and 21st. Our next official home broadcast will be on November 8th against Waldorf. We might try to get that late September game at Lindenwood snuck in there as well, but there are no promises. For everybody here with the Maryville Saints program, for Eric Skelton, who did a great job during our intermission reports, I'm Todd Panula. Have a great night, everyone.